Hey there, Psych2Goers. Before we begin, we would like to thank you all so much for your love and support for our channel. Psych2Go's mission is to make psychology and mental health knowledge more accessible to everyone, and we hope we've helped you along the way. Now, let's begin. As a child, I loved to be the center of attention. I wasn't afraid to introduce myself or speak up, but now there are days when I find it difficult just to look someone in the eye. It was frustrating to watch my peers build relationships with ease while I struggled just to make a connection at all. For years, I blamed shyness and lack of self-esteem for these changes, but it wasn't until college that I truly learned about social anxiety. Just as with any mental illness, social anxiety affects everyone differently. For me, it even changes from moment to moment. Sometimes my nervousness reveals itself in stuttering or repetitive speech. Other times, I freeze. I've learned a myriad of coping mechanisms, some more helpful than others, and techniques to understand the root of my anxiety but none have been more beneficial than therapy. Finding communities such as Psych2Go, where I have a voice as well as a support system to reach out and relate to, also helped me practicing using my voice with confidence, even when I feel so fragile that I could shatter. It's okay if you don't feel ready to join a community or speak up about your experiences, but the team at Psych2Go wants you to know that we are here. Here, are seven things people with social anxiety will understand. Number one, being social can be draining. While not everyone with social anxiety is an introvert, many people can feel exhausted after a social event. Worrying can be tiring, and trying hard to keep your anxiety under control while interacting with others can be enough for you to require time to recharge for the rest of the day. It's okay to push yourself to be social, but be sure to know your limits and respect them. Pushing yourself too far may end in more anxiety and exhaustion than you began with, and it's important to take care of yourself and your needs first. Two, you prefer texting over calling. Do you relate to the dread that comes when you receive a phone call? For some, they fear that calling someone will bother the other person. For others, they may not know who is calling or know what to say when they pick up the phone. Calls can be sudden, disruptive, and unpredictable so you may worry about what the other person is going to tell you. Number three, you feel anxious without direct interaction. Sometimes you might feel anxious without directly talking or interacting with someone. Just being aware that someone is watching you can be difficult. For some, that occurs when they're eating or doing other simple tasks. The fear can stem from judgment for doing something wrong or differently. But more often than not, people don't pay attention as closely as you think. Number four, when it comes to friends, quality is greater than quantity. Not everyone's idea of fun includes hanging out with a huge group of people or going to a party. It can be intimidating to be around a lot of people you don't know, and you'd much rather prefer to spend time with a few close friends. The beauty of life is that no two experiences are the same, so there's a friend out there for everyone, even if you may be socially anxious. Five, it's not all in your head. Social anxiety can manifest as physical sensations for a lot of people. These symptoms are similar to feeling embarrassed, sweaty hands, blushing, hyperventilating, but can feel more intense and last longer. In fact, facing social situations can potentially lead to panic attacks for some people, while others feel physically ill or faint. These physical symptoms may be scary, but they rarely are threatening to one's immediate health. Number six, you feel like everyone is judging you. When you're socially anxious, it can feel like you're under a magnifying glass all the time. You feel overly conscious about yourself and project those worries onto other people about their perceptions of you. But just because you're monitoring every detail about yourself doesn't mean everyone else is too. In reality, people aren't as focused on you as you think, and they likely have their own worries too. And number seven, you are your harshest judge. When you're socially anxious, you might find yourself comparing how you think, act, or look to others. This self-criticism can seriously hurt your mental and emotional health, and it's important to treat yourself more kindly. While it might feel like others make connections more easily or have it so well, it's important to remember that everyone is going through their own things, and they have worries and concerns just like you do. When it comes to social anxiety, it can be hard to interact with people or make friends when you're overly worried. The truth is though, there is no normal when it comes to being social. Everyone has their own way of socializing with others, 
and you'll find someone who you connect with on the same level. In fact, there's nothing wrong with leaving early or spending another night at home with your dog. We hope you enjoyed this and found some comfort. What have your experiences been with social anxiety? Leave a comment down below to share your thoughts. If you enjoyed our video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.